Hi everyone, this is Grace and today we are going to be decorating this fun, lucky four leaf clover set. So first up we have this polka dot clover. Now I will say this entire set, I was working with a very, very, very thick flood. Too thick if you ask me. Why I didn't bother to actually thin it beyond me because <laughs> not only was it a very thick flood but then I decided to do wet on wet designs on top of this very thick flood I mean what was I thinking the reason why that is problematic is because the thicker the flood the faster it will crust over and wet on wet <laughs> requires you to still have a wet flood completely so that the wet icing you're putting on top can actually kind of sink in to the icing down below. <sighs> Thank goodness I didn't do very many cookies in this set because boy was it a pain. So what you're seeing me do right here is I'm using a scribe to just kind of jiggle the surface. And what that does is that it encourages the icing to kind of married together exactly what i wanted to do for wet on wet so that's my simple polka dot up next we are doing this striped situation now again i am doing a very thick wet uh, excuse me flood and what i'm doing here is called a one consistency outline and flood that means i'm using the same exact icing to both outline and flood and the way that i get a big difference in icing coming out of my bag is just pressure on the bag. I'm applying a pretty significant amount of pressure when I flood, and that's how I get so much more icing out. Now, since my flood is so thick here, I have to use my scribe to get it to all settle together. And you can kind of tell, you can kind of see the outline that I made initially, and that tells you just how thick my flood is because that outline had already started to crust when I started to flood, and that's what that means. Here I am, crazy as I am, trying to do wet on wet on top of this very thick icing. Again, I really don't know what I was thinking. And I kind of wish I had now left those lines just as is, like kind of sticking up, because it's a look. No, but no, but no, instead I took my scribe and I'm actually doing exactly what I did to the polka dots. Just kind of jiggling that surface, trying to encourage the icing to settle in. Whew. Makes me anxious just watching this. <laughs> this is something you can do anytime when you have wet on wet. Um, and the top surface is not quite settling. So here I am using... Um, gold. I will link the kind of gold that I'm using. This is a non-toxic gold. Look at that shine. Look at that shine. I will also give you an option for a totally edible gold. I um, suggest doing your research on different kinds of gold powders. Here. Oh, sorry. Just got lost watching myself pipe. Same thing same deal here I'm outlining and flooding with that super thick consistency and I'm just showing you here how when I'm not filming <laughs> on that special background this is how I typically do it I have my whole pan of cookies out um, I typically do this on top of my dehydrator uh, trays but this I believe is just a pan with parchment paper on top I typically try to decorate my cookie on top of the surface that it's going to dry because that means I don't have to move the cookie once I have decorated it. And as I'm sure you've discovered, <laughs> it is quite precarious to move a cookie when it has wet icing on it. And if you've ever gotten um, kind of like, like lines almost, like cracks on top of your icing, that's because you moved your cookie too much 
when it had a just a barely crusted surface and that wet icing underneath actually moved. Maybe you turned the cookie accidentally like you didn't keep it flat and that wet icing moved the very slightly crusted icing on top and that's what gets you those kind of cracks. So I allowed these to dry and now here I am splattering one of my absolute favorite techniques because it's super easy super fast you can do more than one cookie at a time it's a great effect this here i believe i was using just straight up um white food coloring i will say that i don't think those really big splotches actually completely dried or maybe i didn't give them enough time to dry nowadays i like to use white edible paint. I find it dries better personally. And I can link that in the description of this video. I do the tap method with my paintbrush. Some people do the flick, like actually sticking their finger in the, the bristles. I find that to be much, much, much too messy. So I like to do tap, tap, tap. I was really committed here to getting every little, every little inch of these clovers. There is a bit of a, a balance of trying to um, put the right amount of liquid on your brush so that you get the right size splatter. If you put too much, you'll get really big splatters. And here I wanted to do a different color splatter. So this is the same gold that I was using previously for the stripes and just doing my same tap, tap, tap. I always mix my gold powders with Everclear. It is incredibly high alcohol content, clear alcohol. And that's important because it evaporates very quickly, which allows it to dry. And that is the splatter with gold. Next up is the plaque. Then I did, this was a pretty, pretty large cookie. I think it was five inches. And so for that, I definitely didn't want to do a one consistency outline and flood. I, I wanted to do two because that allows me to have a bit of a thinner flood. And here I am outlining with piping consistency. And I typically like to allow my outlines to dry before moving on to ice the flood it just depends on every once in a while i want to flood right away before the outline can dry even here with this flood i'm still applying quite a significant amount of pressure on my bag i find i think one of the probably the most common fears of beginners is being afraid of putting too much pressure on the bag and it, you know it is possible to to pop seams in bags because um, you're working with a thinner plastic and you know not all tipless bags are created equal the bags i use by borderlands bakery i love they're just about as thick as you can get without losing the integrity and the point of a tipless bag. So even here, you can kind of tell that my icing was still a little on the thickish thick side. And I can tell that because the icing needs some help to settle. What I was just doing there is one of the reasons why I used to always like to decorate on top of paper towels because it just makes that kind of tapping technique easier. I allow that to crust over and now I am doing an outline and I'm actually using my flood consistency here partly because my flood was just so thick <laughs> that I could actually do some detail like this and have it not you know just kind of spread out all crazy. It's 
really important when piping lines. You can see that I'm lifting my bag off the surface of the cookie, only making contact, contact at the corners. This is one of my favorite cutters because it's just so fun and so easy and so natural to pipe these curves. And again, I'm using my flood consistency here, lifting my bag off the surface of the cookie for the curves, guiding the icing, touching down at each corner, I prefer to pipe from left to right because I'm right-handed, which is why I chose to switch up the side I was piping. If I was piping on top of a cookie swivel, I could have just turned the cookie um, and continue to pipe, but I chose to just pause and start from the other side. So here I am using my projector to project an image of a font that I like onto the cookie. And you'll see that I'm using white icing here. That's very intentional because I'm going to be painting this lettering later after it dries with the gold. And it's just a lot easier on yourself um, to use the same color. If you're gonna be painting your lettering, to use the same color to pipe as the flooded surface below it and that's because it is almost impossible to perfectly paint lettering so if you miss a spot it's much less noticeable if you're using the same color icing as what's on the flood and the kind of lettering i'm doing here is called pressure piping that means that I'm adjusting the pressure on the bag as I'm piping. So on the down strokes, I'm applying more pressure, which gets more icing to come out of the bag. And on the up strokes, I am applying, or I'm releasing pressure, I should say. I'm using my scribe here to kind of help settle out the, the fatter bits <laughs> so that they look, um, they look smoother. I very rarely do that only when I f really feel like I need to because I just I just don't have the patience <laughs> it's patience enough to just let her this out so I'm done piping this and it's super important that you allow this to completely dry before you paint on top of it and again, I'm using the gold dust and I'm mixing it with Everclear. Making sure to not put too much liquid onto my brush because if you put too much, the second you touch it down on the surface, it will just kind of pool out and it will run down the letter onto the flooded surface. And it is really, 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 really hard to get gold uh, dust off of a surface. If you tackle it right away, what I usually do is I get a clean brush with either Everclear or water, and I just get off as much as I can with the wet brush, and then I will take a dry brush and go through with a clean dry brush. It's decent, but it's definitely not perfect. I do love the look of painted letters, but golly gee whiz, it takes a long time. So if you're ever doing, first of all, if you're doing lettering, charge more. <laughs> if you're doing painted lettering, charge even more, um, both for the time, but also for paying for the product. It's not, it's not a cheap product. I can also link these brushes that I have. It's a decent brush set. I have a lot of different brushes, but this is a good one. And that is the Lucky Plaque. And this is the whole set. Small, simple, but 
effective, cute, colorful. It's a great set for paint. Excuse me. It's a great set for St. Patrick's Day. So I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope you make this yourself.